What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. Now today we have a very special video about sewing and alterations of equipment for equipped powerlifting. Now I know there's 70,000 of you out there who are and about five of you who are like, yes, this is what I want. And let me tell you, this video is for the five of you and for us because at Calgary Barbell we make what we want to make and this is about to be the best damn sewing video you've ever seen. How that sound? Yeah, that sound good. Tell them break it down. Don't forget the dollar sign. How that sound? Yeah, that sound good. Tell them get in line. Hold it down, hold it down. Came up from the underground. How that sound? Yeah, that sound good. Sounds good. How that sound? Yeah, that sound good. All right. Welcome to Nana B's Sewing Corner. As you may know, as an equipped lifter, we use equipment. We just cheat our brains out using these suits and shirts so that we can magically lift more weight. There are three pieces of equipment that, a, that an equipped lifter uses. There's a squat suit here, we got a bench shirt here, and a deadlift suit here. Now, mostly when you order these pieces of equipment, they come in a stock size. This may or may not fit your body perfectly well, and there may or may not be some advantages to altering said pieces of equipment so that they fit better or tighter in a certain way. Now, before we talk about what the alterations to each piece of equipment are and what they might do, we're gonna talk about two very fundamental things. Number one is gonna be your choice of thread. Now, I use an extra strong nylon upholstery thread, and this is what I recommend most people use. I've had single seams hold up to well over 800 pounds using just this thread sewing by hand. Now, for anybody who has a sewing machine, I don't know, figure it out, it's probably easy, but we're gonna cover hand sewing today. So, the other thing we're gonna talk about is sewing technique and the basics of how you sew. So first we're gonna talk about threading the needle. Now the first time I altered equipment, uh, I had no idea how to sew, period. So what I did was I just looped one single length of thread through the needle, tied it to itself, and then tried to sew, and that is dumb, that's not how you do it. Basically, you need to loop the thread through the needle and tie it to itself, so there's effectively two lengths of thread. So cut yourself a length of thread. We're gonna cut a pretty short amount right now because we're not actually gonna sew anything. Once you got your length of thread, obviously put it through the eye of the needle and then pull it so it's even on both ends, like so. Then you're gonna tie it to itself with the two ends that are exposed. Now you probably wanna tie a couple of knots because you want this shit to be pretty sturdy. So just tie like four or five half hitch kind of style knots. All right. So now you got your thread, you got your needle. Now, the next most important thing is the stitch that you're gonna use. So I learned this by YouTubing it and hopefully I can save you guys the same problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called the back stitch. So it's essentially stitching over itself every time you go through. So you're gonna start off going through at a given point, in this case, in the paper that we're using. Pull it all the way through to the not which isn't gonna hold because it's paper. Then when you come back through, let's say you come through about here. Now you've got one stitch through. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come back behind the initial hole or right around the initial hole. So it lays down thread on both sides of that same stitch. And then you're gonna go through further ahead again, come back kind of in the middle of your last stitch. So it's double ply stitching. It's kind of reinforcing as you go. So you can see the pattern there. And basically that's how you're gonna go through the length of the seam and that's a basic how to on stitching. Once you're done, cut this, knot this up a whole bunch so it's not gonna fall through and um, put your equipment on for a warm up. Quick disclaimer, I'm not responsible if you mess this up and you hurt yourself. So be careful test your seams, pull on them real hard, take them for a ride warm up style before you load it up and try a heavy single with seams that you've just made yourself. Now let's talk a little bit about modifying the individual pieces of equipment and what that might do for you. So we'll start with the squat suit because that's the first lift. Now there's a few different modifications you can do on the squat suit. Number one, and probably one of the most common is to take in your straps. Now the straps are going to tighten the suit vertically on your body and it's gonna impact your bracing in the suit. Now if you can brace really well in your suit and you tighten the straps, it's probably gonna help stiffen your brace. If you're having troubles getting bowed forward and pulled over, then tightening the straps is probably gonna increase the amount to which that happens. 
When you take in the straps, you can literally either fold it in like so and put the seam right through here, or you can sort of bunny ear it up like this. Now, I'm pretty sure either is legal, but what you can't do is you can't fold it on itself and create more than one ply of equipment. That is illegal. You can't do that. So you have to leave the tag hanging in either direction. Uh, I think it looks a little bit neater and more tidy to pull the straps in like that. So that's usually how I do it there. The next thing you can do is you can bring in the hips. Now I'm gonna pull this suit inside out and you'll see that on the Titan squat suits anyways, there's this X here. Now that is pretty much where most of the force is gonna go through in terms of uh, compression on your hips. So what most people will do if you don't wanna tighten the torso, uh, like up here, and you don't need it tighter on your leg, but you want more compression on your hips, which to me generally makes the suit feel a little bit more like a new suit or like a, a fresh piece of equipment. After a number of uses, things start to get maybe a little bit sluggish, a little bit stretched out. I bring in the hips, makes it feel like brand new again. What I recommend people do here is sort of a crescent shape. So start here, make your deepest point of the alteration in on this X and then back out so that the leg remains the same size. Quick note about modifications, start with very small alterations, like a centimeter, a few millimeters. Uh, don't do too much at once. You can always do more, but it's really annoying if you can't get your shit on after you alter it. Um, so start smaller, then do more, then do more, and gradually take it in more and more over time. Now the last thing we're gonna talk about with a squat suit, is gonna be the actual leg cuff. So if you find that these are slipping on you, you can to some degree, again, pinch along the seam and just take it in as, as you normally would, right? Like up into the hip and you can kind of crescent back out if you're not trying to take the hip in, right? Um, so you can do exactly the opposite of what I was saying with the hip and come in so that your deepest point of the seam is in on the leg. Now, there's definitely a point of diminishing returns with these where if the suit legs are too tight, they will ride up even worse as soon as you flex and start moving your quads. So keep that in mind. All right, now we're gonna talk about the bench shirt. And really there's only one modification that I'm gonna recommend anyone do on the bench shirt. Um, I know Adam Ramsey famously took in his own chest plate. Uh, I don't know that that's something I would uh, rely on because if you look at the the seams for the chest plate, it is super heavy duty. And that is where all of the force goes through on your bench and you don't want that popping. So I wouldn't mess with the chest plate. But what you can do is take in the seam along the sleeves. Now, depending on whether you got a straight sleeve, sorry, straight sleeve or angled sleeve bench shirt, that's gonna change what sort of pattern you have to follow. Uh, and you can see somebody took this sleeve in and then took the seam out. So it's kind of torn, there's some frayed. There you go. Um, what taking the sleeves in is gonna do for you is it's going to effectively pull a little bit more on the chest plate. So by tightening the sleeves, you will effectively get a little bit tighter chest plate, but it's way more marginal, way more fractional uh, in terms of the adjustment. The other thing it's gonna do is it's going to restrict the ability for you to get this shirt higher up. Now, obviously the lower you wear it down on your arms, the more, again, the more stretched out that chest plate's gonna be. So tighter sleeves generally is gonna mean more shirt, uh, and that that is the give or take of you know a tighter chest plate more or less um, Pretty straightforward again. Like I said, just follow the seam of the pattern um, If you find that the cuff is the right size and you don't want to mess with that again You can use sort of a crescent shape a little bit tough on the angled sleeve as you can see it's kind of a crooked pattern to follow um, With a straight sleeve. It's probably a little easier to make the crescent, but uh, I mean that's the long and short of it uh, deadlift suits are honestly gonna be the exact same as your squat suit would be. So all the same modifications, you can do the straps, you can do the hips, and you can do the legs. Exact same as I talked about with the squat suit. So for anyone who's still here with us, thank you. I've been waiting my whole life to make this video. Really excited about sewing. I like to just put on a movie and spend 40 minutes per arm stitching in my bench shirt. Feels good to bench in something that I changed and modified. I don't know why that feels like more of a connection to the equipment and probably nobody cares. But thank you for watching. If you have any questions or other suggestions, recommendations, anything I missed or you think I missed, uh, let me know in the comments below. I also don't know how this will apply to multiply, so bear that in mind. Um, and we'll see everybody in the next video. Peace.